even really sure why I want to create this film now. I think maybe the timing just happens to be right. I remember when um, I was a kid in the, in the 70s, like 1977, I think it was, there was a show on TV called In Search Of, hosted by Leonard Nimoy. And he, um, he did, one of the episodes was called In Search Of Bigfoot. And I remember being fascinated by this giant, hairy man-like, ape-like creature running around the woods. And that film that they would show of him walking through the woods, it was remarkable. So as a, I think I was about 10, so I, as a 10-year-old, I was amazed that there was this creature that lived out in the woods. And um, during that time, vacations or a, a, less ex, uh, uh, a less expensive form of vacation was camping. So my family did a lot of camping. And uh, every summer we would go to a different place, uh, mostly all on the East Coast uh, from Florida up to even up into Canada. And I always expected as a child to run around the woods and, and encounter a Bigfoot. You know, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. There, you know, there's this big creature running around in the woods. Maybe I'll meet him. And of course, I never did. Uh, and you know, like my, my parents, oh, there's no such thing as Bigfoot. It doesn't exist. And it's a man in a costume. It's a man in a monkey costume. I remember my mom saying that. And so, you know, it's always stuck with me in the back of my mind. Uh, could there be Sasquatch? And it's, you know, as I got older, I thought it was interesting that there were a lot of different sightings all over the world. And, you know, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, I, I don't even know all the other names that it goes by. But I just always thought it was interesting. Um, and then as a filmmaker now, I kind of feel like uh, I wanted to create a documentary. And it just so happens that uh, I met a couple of guys at a bar, a local bar in town, and uh, they were, I don't know, I think there was a show on TV like Finding Bigfoot or Hunting Bigfoot, I don't know, some kind of show like that on Discovery or something. Anyway, they were talking about the show and uh, <clears throat> they were talking about Bigfoot. And uh, I remember one of them saying to the other guy, oh, have you ever heard, have you ever seen Way Way on the Willy? And, uh, I think it, it caught my attention because in about in 2010 I moved to this area and I'm about five minutes away from Wei Weyanda State Park where I like to hike and and uh, fish and run uh, run the trails that are there it's it's a great park and it's usually pretty quiet and so now I was intrigued like what are these guys talking about because I had two really weird experiences that happened to me in Wei Wei Anda, um, around the time when I first moved in, one of them was, uh, I was out fishing by this pond and it was really quiet out there, kind of like a overcast, cloudy day. It, it might've been like uh, early fall or something. I remember the weather was, it was, it was mild and it just had like a, but had a creepy feeling already to the woods. So it, it could have been all created in my mind. But I was out there fishing and it was really quiet. No, I didn't hear any animals running around or birds or nothing. And I heard this loud crack. And it sounded just like somebody taking a baseball bat and whacking it against a tree. And um, I know from different shows that that's one of the things, that's one of the signs of Sasquatch or Bigfoot, right? He, he bangs against a tree and, and maybe they knock against a tree to communicate with other Bigfoots or maybe they are knocking against the tree to uh, just scare you away or, or whatever. But I only know is I kind of froze because it was unexpected to hear this loud knocking on the woods uh, or on a tree in the woods. And um, so I stood really still for a minute and I tried to you know, it happened so quickly, it caught me off guard. I didn't know which direction that the sound came from. Like when you're in the woods, sometimes it's really hard to tell which direction, you know, you hear a sound unless you hear it multiple times and you can kind of start to orient towards it. And then 
bang, it happened again. But this time I was kind of ready for it. So I could kind of orient where, at least the general direction where the, where the sound was coming from. And I didn't see anything. I didn't see a branch fall. I didn't see any trees shaking. I didn't see any shapes. I didn't see a bear. I didn't see anything, just heard that noise. And I stood really still. I tried to focus in that area. I waited. I thought maybe I could outweigh it. Maybe if I stood really still, eventually it would move to, to, to get away. I, I probably stood there for a good 15, 20 minutes, just staring out into the direction and nothing. So uh, I was spooked though, the, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. So I slowly backed away from the pond and got back out to the, there's a fire road that runs through there. Got back out to that road and kind of uh, had a quick pace back to my car. And, um, and so that was my, my first experience in Wei Weyanda with something. All right, so can you tell me your name? Rick Burton. And uh, what year did you have your sighting? I think it was the fall 2019. And what were you doing at the time? So beautiful day, quiet. I'm enjoying my kayaking, paddling along. I go into this little cove, so I'm pretty close to the shoreline. And uh, as I'm coming out of the cove, I hear this weird noise. I don't know, a big fat guy trying to clear his throat. Or like, <coughs> something like that. And then I see this guy and his dog, and uh, I'm paddling towards them and the dog takes off like running as fast as going crazy and I turn my kayak around and as I'm turning around and heading towards the direction that the dog is the dog's actually already past me I see this huge thing tall furry running like crazy fast and then I start continuing to the shoreline. I meet up with the guy. By that time, he's got his dog back. And I was like, did you see that? And he was like, yeah, I saw that. I was like, what the hell was that? And that's when he started telling me the stories about Willie. Can you show me on the map where you were? Yeah. I came all the way down along this side to the south end of the lake, came around, was paddling up this way. This is the little cove that I went into when I started hearing the noises. And it was right along this line where I saw the guy with his dog before the dog went crazy. Then I had a second experience a few years after that where I was hiking around in the same area. And uh, as I was hiking on, along the trail, um, I, I thought, uh, I'm pretty sure, I heard uh, two other hikers like coming towards me and they were having a conversation, but I couldn't hear the conversation. It was just normal like, like mumbling kind of conversation because they were, you know, further down the trail than I was. But, you know, when you're out in the woods and you're by yourself, and, and you hike enough times, you really start to feel, this might sound kind of crazy, but you can feel the woods, you can feel the forest, you can feel the, the atmosphere of the woods. That sounds kind of hokey, but when you're by yourself out in the woods, like you can sense when there's birds around, you can sense when there's squirrels around. I've run into a few bears and I just, I knew they were there. I had this weird sense that there was uh, something and that's some people who are hiking coming towards me. And I feel like I noticed motion. Um, I wasn't really paying much attention to it. When you're hiking through the woods and you think there's hikers coming up to you, it's like no big deal. Hey, how's it going? And as I rounded the turn, there was nothing there. And I think it was the fact that there was nothing there that kind of froze me in my tracks. I mean, the, the hair on the back of my neck again, like stood up. I got this weird like tingly, chilly feeling down my back, and I just froze. 
So I just stood there as quiet as I could. And I didn't make any noises and I just listened and listened and there was nothing. And so it was a really bizarre feeling that I expected to see hikers on the trail because I saw movement and I heard them talking, but when I came around the corner, they weren't there. So, uh, so thanks for uh, agreeing to tell me your story uh, about Bigfoot. Can you tell me uh, your name? My name is Anthony Cartucci, but you can call me Tony. Yeah, this is probably about two to three years ago. I was at Way Way Yonder Park. I like to take my dog along this path. Um, it's actually along the Appalachian Trail, but I cut off on this little path and it meanders around this pond. It's actually really beautiful in the winter time. Um, but as I'm walking with my dog, I hear this rustling behind me. And out of nowhere, this thing, I, I don't even know how I could describe it, comes up and grabs my dog and runs off. And so I start chasing after it, but not really knowing what it is. I, I no longer can see it or track it. And when I look down, all I find is this bloody leash of my dogs. Do you have any, do you have the leash or, or a photo? I have a picture of it. I have so many photos. Instagram. You know, I don't really want to waste your time. Would it be all right if I sent you the photo when I find it later? Yeah, all right, that sounds great. What, um, how do you know it wasn't a bear? Bro, it came up and literally grabbed my dog off the ground and ran off with it. I don't think a bear can run on its back legs like that. Did it make any noises? It was kind of like a <laughs> kind of sound. And this thing was not a bear, and all that's left is this bloody leash. Um, I brought a map with me of the area. Would, could we take a look at it, and you could show me where about... Yeah, I mean, I go this trail fairly often, so I should know where it is. All right, let's go over to this table. Okay, okay so Anthony, tell me uh, about where you were uh, well, when you saw this uh, Sasquatch creature. Well, if this is the Appalachian Trail, then, well, then I would say right around here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just got done interviewing Anthony, and um, his story seems kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure that I 100% believe him. I mean, his dog got taken by a Bigfoot, and all he found was a bloody leash, but he doesn't have a photo readily available on his phone. So we'll see. If he sends it to me, that'll be a miracle. And uh, earlier, I interviewed Rick. And um, his story was interesting. I don't know. Both Anthony and Rick, I'm not quite sure if, they're, if they've are if they made this up. They really seem to believe uh, the story that they're telling. So uh, we'll see if I get the photo. And uh, Rick's um, weird noise that Bigfoot made, the, similar actually to Anthony's. And the spots that they marked on the map were um, were definitely both areas of interest. Uh, for me. So they nailed the map and uh, they were consistent sort of on their sound. Um, we'll see. I have one more interview to do. I got to go home and get all my gear uh, charged up and ready to go. And in a couple days, I'm going to go see some guy named Joe. I'm not sure if that's his real name or not. Uh, thanks for agreeing to do this uh, this interview with me. Uh, can sure. You tell us your name. Joe. Joe. That's about it. I'm good with that. I live backed up to where we on State Park, and um, we were just uh, having a fire out here at the house with uh, my brother and a couple other buddies. Um, one night after a holiday, I think it was Thanksgiving, um, a couple years ago, and. Uh, we were just messing around, uh, you know, we talked about Bigfoot and stuff and, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. And so we, we, we did a couple tree knocks. So, so this is the tree that I knocked on. This wasn't the piece of wood, but it was, it was, it was similar. And um, you know, I'll try to hit it. We did it twice. Oh. 
So that was pretty much what it sounded like when we did it. And, you know, we're listening, nothing, nothing happened or anything. And then 10 minutes later, we're, uh, we're still out here and, you know, by the campfire. And then all of a sudden we hear this like crazy guttural growl, like roar thing. It was, it was, it was loud and it was, it was close. It was right on the other side of this wall. It was right here, which is a hundred feet to the fireplace. It was right here. It was like, this thing had a set of lungs on it. Like that was, I don't know. I mean, you could tell this was a, like, it, it was more than a, an animal. It was more like a beast is the way that I would describe it. It was, so I've never heard anything like it. It was crazy. And me and my brother were like, what the, what the hell could that have been, right? And, you know, shit, we just, we just messed around doing a couple tree knocks. And so we kind of got spooked a little bit because then we hear something over here. Like we, there's a lot of leaf cover and like you could hear something walking through and it didn't sound like, it didn't sound like an animal, like a, like a deer or anything like that. It was, it was weird sounding. So we, we went inside and uh, you know, we kind of just let the fire burn out and just, you know, and we, we sat in the, in the kitchen there and you could see something moving over this wall, right? And this wall is, is four feet high. You know, what, what, what the hell was moving around back here? No, there's no way it was, it was a bear. It's just not, it's not possible. I've, I've seen bear, hear bear, bear are here all the time. And um, bears don't walk four or five feet, five feet tall. They just don't, you know? So, um, yeah, no, definitely not. The next day we came out to check it out just to see what it was. And, you know, the, the leaf litter made it really hard to see anything. But right here, like right where my foot is here, you could, there was a huge imprint. And there was no discernible, like, toes or anything. But it was, whatever made it was deep. It was, it was a, it was a big, big animal or whatever it was. And you can see like here, he's got perfect cover or whatever for checking us out at the fireplace. And it's maybe a hundred feet from here to the, to the fireplace. And, you know, it was scoping us out. It was it really freaked me out, but you know, I don't care. Believe me or not, it's what it was, man. So after listening to the stories and plotting the points on the map, it's pretty interesting how close they are to each other. You've got Rick's down here by the lake, Anthony's missing dog out here by the Appalachian trail. And you've got Joe's backyard right over here, which is very close to an area on the map that's called the Boulder Garden. So that could be an area where possible caverns or uh, some big gaps in between boulders where something could use that as shelter or to even hide. Um, and then you've got all of this state forest, and a lot of mountains, a lot of elevation change, very thick forest all around this like community that's right here. So if there was some kind of creature out in the woods and it needed food, it could easily venture into this community for, to scavenge for something. The other thing that was interesting, I did get the photos finally from Anthony of his uh, bloody dog leash. Uh, they're kind of interesting and not sure if they're 100% real. Uh, they're a little bit gruesome, but... Um, uh, he did send them to me finally. And then I got this plastic bag in my mailbox just the other day. After Joe's interview, uh, he texted me and said that he left this in the mailbox for me to check out. It was fur or hair, something that he collected off of his fence um, the night that he had his weird experience with some kind of creature. So he sent me this this kind of, I don't know what it is. Uh, he says it's it's fur. Um, the only real way to tell would be to have somebody analyze it, but we've got fur, we've got a photo of a big footprint, we've got a photo of bloody leash, and we've got a lot of kind of experiences, I'll call them, all in a uh, kind of relatively close area. So next step, tomorrow I go out to the woods with my camera gear. And I'll hit a couple of these spots and uh, just see what they look like. See if it makes sense that 
uh, there could be a creature traveling in way way on the forest out here so this is the location that's pretty close to where um rick was kayaking the water's right here and um this is also the path that i was hiking on where i expected to see two hikers i was coming along here and it kind of sneaks its way through um, a couple trees and all these rocks over here and i could have sworn i saw some hikers but when i got up in this area uh, there was nothing around so these are the two areas and actually right where we are if um, Rick was fishing here actually Joe's property is probably up if you go up over this mountain and down on the other side you would wind up uh, in his backyard the trail uh, that Anthony was on runs up through those woods so I believe that's about where um, his dog went missing so, but this is the area where I was when I heard tree knocking and it came out, it came from out of there somewhere from that like ridge line. And you can see that if something was in there, it could easily hide, stay hidden in the ridge line there. Um, but it's getting really dark out and I got a little ways to go to get back to the car. So I think I'm going to start going and I'll have to come back out here tomorrow just to check one more spot. Well, after listening to all those different stories, I don't know if they're true or not. Some of them sounded believable, and, but I don't know, maybe I'm never going to see a Bigfoot. I know my stories had a very weird feeling to them. I guess Bigfoot's not real. Crazy mother... Chewbacca's brother being down from Kashyyyk or Dagobah, something like that. Uh huh. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to ask you.